This is the shortest video you'll ever see on the event loop. Let's do it. All right, so right here we have the JavaScript runtime environment. This can be the browser or this can be Node.js. So inside of this, there are a couple of things that you need to know about. So the first thing you need to know about is the JavaScript engine. So in Chrome, it uses the V8 engine. In Firefox, it uses SpiderMonkey. Each web browser is gonna have a different engine usually. Node.js uses the V8 engine. And so inside of the engine, there is the heap, which you don't need to know too much about. And then there is the call stack, which you do need to know about. So right here is a very basic example. So right here we have function A. So what's gonna happen is function A is added to the call stack. We then look inside of function A. What do we have? We have this console log. So this is added to the call stack and then this runs. So it is popped from the call stack. So this goes away. And then we come back in here and we see, okay, function B. So now function B is added to the call stack. And inside of function B, we have this console log. So this is going to be added to the call stack. Then this runs, so it is popped from the call stack. And then we have function C, which is added to the call stack. We go inside function C. This log is added to the call stack. It runs, it's then done. We now see in function C, there's nothing left. So now function C is removed from the call stack. Then function B we see is done. So this is popped from the call stack. And now we see function A is done. So now this is popped from the call stack. So the next important part is this, the web APIs. And so this is if we're in the browser. If we're in Node.js, it's going to be the APIs that are provided by Node.js. And so right here we have the window object. So when we type in console log or we use fetch or local storage, what's actually happening is window.console.log. And so all of these web APIs are actually a part of the window object. And so all of these things are not actually a part of JavaScript. They are just the, a part of the web APIs that the browser provides. And then Node.js has slightly different ones, but console log, fetch, set timeout, some of them are in both. So these are special functions that are provided by the browser. So when one of these things are added to the call stack, what happens is it's either added to the micro task queue or the task queue, which is also known as the callback queue. Most of these are going to be added to the task queue. Pretty much the only thing that gets added to the micro task queue are promises. So usually when you're using fetch or anything else that returns a promise, it's going to be added to the micro task queue. And everyone always talks about the callback queue or the task queue first and then the micro task queue. But right here, I've put the micro task queue on top because this has a higher priority. So what happens is things are added to the call stack. Let's say you use set timeout. It doesn't just run on the call stack because it's a web API. It goes over here and now it's handled by this part of the browser. And so you have set timeout, whatever your callback function is, and then let's say for 100 milliseconds. When those 100 milliseconds have passed, it then gets added to the task queue. And it is now sitting in the task queue and it's waiting, it's ready to, to be added to the call stack. How does it get added to the call stack? So it gets added to the call stack with the event loop. The event loop is just basically an infinite loop. And what it does is whenever this call stack has nothing on it, it first looks, is there anything on the micro task queue? If, it, if there is, it adds it to the call stack. And because there's something now on the call stack, it's going to run that until the call stack is empty. When this is empty, it comes back again and it looks, is there anything on the micro task queue? Nope, there's nothing on the micro task queue. So then it looks at the task queue or the callback queue. Is there anything in this queue? Yes, there is. Okay, we're going to add this to the call stack and then it will run and the event loop is just constantly going through this cycle. So right here, I have a very common example to show how this process works. Before I show you this, I want you to look at this and think, what is the console going to show when I run this code? All right, now that you thought about it, let's run it and see what happens. So we get one, three, two. So the reason why we get that is because we get function A added to the call stack. Inside of function A, we get console log one. This console log immediately runs. We then get set timeout. This because this uses set timeout, this goes to the web APIs. And even though it's for zero milliseconds, it is still added to the task queue. 
So set timeout goes to the call stack. It sees, oh, we need to use this web API. So it goes over here. And after zero milliseconds, it's added to the task queue. And the event loop is going in circles, going in circles. But the call stack is not yet empty because it still has function A sitting on the call stack. After it deals with this, it then takes this right here and adds it to the call stack, logs three. And now function A is done. So function A gets popped from the call stack. Now when the event loop, which has been going around this entire time, sees that this call stack is empty, it now looks at the micro task queue. Is there anything? No. It looks at the task queue. Is there something? Yes. This function right here, console log two, is sitting here in the task queue. So the event loop takes that and adds it to the call stack. And now console log two runs. And that's exactly why it is one, three, two, even though this is a set timeout for zero seconds. And so in this example, we have two set timeouts and the result is one, four, three, two. So one, four, but then it does three and then two. So even though this one is looked at first and this one is added to the web APIs first, because this one takes a hundred milliseconds, it's sitting right here for a hundred milliseconds. During that time, this right here is added to the call stack. It sees, oh, we need to use the web API. So it sends it to the web API and it's gonna sit there for zero milliseconds until it is moved to the task queue. And then a hundred milliseconds later, this console log is added to the task queue. So when this call stack is empty, it takes the very first thing from the callback queue, which in this case is console log three, adds it to the call stack, runs it. Then when the event loop sees this call stack is empty, it sees that the console log two is sitting there in the task queue. So then it gets added to the call stack and then it runs. So there it is. You learned something, subscribe. You wanna learn some more? Watch this video right here. See you next time.